Franbo is a story about fear and guilt, the confusing world and how people who dwell within it can be difficult to read. It's about duality, darkness and light, and how there's a middle, a grey area that cares about both sides, who might be broken. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. Welcome to the amazing yet complex story of Franbo Explained. Beware, as there will be spoilers ahead. With that said, let's begin. Franbo Dagenhart is a 10-year-old girl who lives happily with her parents. On a Monday night, she witnesses her parents being brutally murdered in the house while she was busy playing with her cat called Mr. Midnight. Throughout the game, she tries to find answers to who killed her parents and subconsciously thinks that she might have been the culprit, as she sees a demon called Remor in that night. Fran discovers ugly secrets about the world during the time in 1944 including human experiments, lobotomy, murder, lies and deceptions, mental and physical abuse from people in higher positions whom you are to trust. Despite all the darkness and misery, there's also light and happiness. As Fran embarks on her journey, she meets fantastical creatures of light and magical places such as Ithirsta. The question remains, what a majority of what she experiences is delusion or reality, especially as she relies heavily on an opioid medicine presumably called duotine. Fran starts her story by narrating her experiences as a sweet diary, at least for the beginning. Fran is spending time with her parents when they gift her a sweet cat she names Mr. Midnight due to having black fur. Fran's parents leave on Friday without saying where they're going, asking Fran's aunt, Grace, to look after her while they're gone. Fran expresses how much she likes and trusts Grace. Skipping forward to Monday night, Fran expresses she feels something unusual happening when suddenly a demonic figure appears outside of her bedroom's window. Fran then goes to her parents' room after hearing her mother screaming. When she reaches the room, she finds her parents' corpses killed and dismembered brutally. Blood starts streaming down Fran's eyes and she runs out of the house in shock while looking back at her house, which starts bleeding as well. Her eyes bleeding might be a metaphor of how painful her experience is, and the house bleeding might suggest that the death of her parents represent the death of the house, a place where she doesn't belong anymore, or in other words, a dead place. As later in the game, we also learn a house is where a person is, with many doors to open. Fran's bleeding eyes also refers to being possessed by the demonic figure whom we will learn later in the game to be called Remar. Fran then reaches the dark forest and faints due to mental and physical exhaustion, with a cat lying atop her unconscious buddy. Two cryptic figures covered with cloaks soon approach Fran, scaring her cat away while taking her unconscious buddy. Fran then wakes up in a mental institute with her psychiatrist, Dr. Dearn. Right from the start, some critical information is mentioned which play an important role towards the ending. Dr. Dearn mentions that sadness is something with everyone, and in a letter from Aunt Grace, she mentions that creativity is Fran's greatest gift, which she uses to a great extent to overcome the sheer gravity and weight of her trauma, something that lets her see the world in a different way. Dr. Dearn prescribes a new medication for Fran, which is called Duotine, mentioning that it will help relax Fran. As soon as Fran takes one, she experiences gore and blood all over the room, with the room's door having vanished, and a mysterious shadow figure appearing behind Fran, whom we will learn to be called a Kamala. 
an entity alongside many more from the fifth reality, who consume sadness and guilt, entities that are often present next to everyone, representing real-world sadness and mental health issues. Snapping back to reality after Fran faints due to shock, Dr. Dearn instructs the nurse to take Fran back to her room and never let her take this medicine again. While unconscious, Fran dreams of an overshadowing entity with an animal skull who warns Fran if she ever leaves the Institute, he will hunt her down and bring her to insanity. Meanwhile, Fran's cat appears lying on her stomach, saying that he is waiting for her in the forest and he loves her. He also instructs her to take the medication as it will help her find Mr. Midnight. The medication seems to have hallucinatory side effects similar to morphine, an opioid drug which many patients have reported to have experienced hallucinations after taking it. It's possible that duotine, the fictional medicine in this game, allows Fran to see the hidden side of reality while using her creativity as suggested by her aunt. She might be able to see a visual representation of everyday complex emotions and mood, with the medicine magnifying her imagination and instincts. Hence why taking the medicine helps her see the world more clearly, with every complex covert aspect of life becoming projected in a simple bite-sized visual manner, helping her understand things better, especially being a young girl with not a fully developed mind yet. Through a patient report next to her bed, we understand the backstory of Fran and how she ended up in the asylum. Name, Fran Bo Dagenhart. Age, 10. Gender, female. The patient was found near the Oswald Asylum, showing signs of psychosis. The Bo Dagenhart family, tragedy. Details, omitted. Treatment. Dr. Marcel Dearn has tried different medications and all have been cancelled because of side effects. Documented July 25th, 1944. According to the report, we can conclude that the people who took Fran from the forest placed her near the asylum in order for the asylum to analyze her and take her in. This raises the question of whom those people were and if they had a hand in murdering Fran's parents. Fran encounters a nurse on duty who seems to be very bitter and unhappy, known as Gladys. Fran distracts her and manages to extract duotine pills which were locked away under Dr. Dearn instructions. After taking a pill in order to find Mr. Midnight, Fran sees the world yet again in a more gruesome, different way, observing that a Kamala is sitting in the chair of the nurse on duty, suggestive of sadness and unhappiness, a visual representation of what the nurse carries with her. Fran proceeds to go to Dr. Dearn's office, who is having a conversation with Grace. While hidden, she eavesdrops that Grace urges Dr. Dearn to release Fran and that she needs to know something. But Dr. Dearn stays adamant that Fran is not prepared just yet. Fran then explores the asylum more, encountering Phil, a kid who is visually and verbally very sad, someone who is repeatedly told by the asylum staff to be very sick. In the surreal reality, Fran sees a Kamala sitting next to him. The entity keeps on controlling him and patronizing him. Just how depression and self-doubt could feel. A feeling as if a separate entity listens to the people who suffer from it and sympathizes with them. But as time passes, they realize that it keeps them capsulated in a little bubble of sadness and keeps on bashing them and putting them down, not letting them ever prevail and overcome it, while pretending to accept them for what they may be, a false feeling of lacking dignity and any presence. The Kamala tells Fran that Phil is playing with his uncle, a possible hint that Phil was abused by his uncle, and that Phil killed his bird, a guilt that Phil cannot overcome. Phil seems to also know about the shadow figures and the monster with the skull that keeps on hunting Fran. The monster seems to be much superior compared to the other shadows and prevents Phil from helping Fran. 
Fran then encounters another young patient. She seems to be very dismissive, as she can't follow conversations. This girl tells Fran about the shadow figures, and that blood which she calls red milk oozes from her wrists after the oppressive and abusive asylum staff tie her up and prevent her from drying. Fran gives her some band-aids she took from the nurse's desk, which in return, the girl lets Fran take a green crayon, which comes in handy later in the game. Switching to the surreal reality, Fran witnesses a horrendous spectacle of a Kamala latching onto the inanimate body of this girl, who keeps on telling her that she should blame herself and to be quiet, that a specific someone takes away the innocent inner child and devours it, and that nobody believes her. This dialogue alongside bloody handprints on the mattress of this girl might be suggestive of physical abuse, something that has brought this girl to insanity and mental health issues. Going down to the lower level, Fran encounters the guard who is looking after the office key, a man who is extremely bitter, with horrible attitude, whom even the nurses don't like. Fran yet meets another girl who tells Fran that her brain was eaten by the doctor and that her thoughts are taken. She seems to be in a very bad state and correspondingly, the surreal world suggests likewise. The Kamala has successfully consumed her fully, with the girl's bones being seen inside the Kamala's stomach, which is lined with sharp teeth, while the Kamala utters nonsensical words such as I will lie to you. I will hide. This shows how far this girl has been tormented and abused to be visualized as bones in the surreal world. A possibility that she had been lobotomized, as she keeps on saying that her brain was eaten and thoughts were taken, as this was mostly popular in the 1940s. In a common room, Fran encounters a boy fiddling with a TV. He asks Fran to change the channels. When she does, she finds a news broadcast mentioning that human testing has been approved, an important element involved in the asylum which we will get back to later. Taking a pill, Fran sees the boy's Kamala who's latched onto the TV, with the boy's eyes gouged out, with a bloody line on the wall reading, Hide your pain. Yet again, hints and clues of mental health issues. Talking to the Kamala, it utters words that explain how TV can be detrimental to mental health. Going to the cafeteria, Fran talks to a boy who perceives himself as a king. Fran draws him a castle and a horse, which in return, he lets Fran to take his cane. In the surreal world, the boy's Kamala keeps on repeating that the holy man took off his clothes and that his mother doesn't believe him. Unfortunately, a presumably recurring problem which happened to the girl who was drawing as well. Fran tries to distract the guard in order to steal the office keys, but as she sees how resilient he is, she throws a cup of hot coffee at him, which makes him leave to clean up. Fran goes to Dr. Dearn's office, while in there, she learns about the alarm which gives her a short period of time before it reactivates when running away. Felden suddenly appears and locks Fran in the office. In there, she switches to Surreal World, where she finds a corpse of herself and a Kamala attached to her. A mysterious skeletal hand opens the air duct's lid, which Fran uses to move through. The sand belongs to an entity called Edward, whom we will encounter much later in the game. Fran finds herself in the cleaning room cellar after exiting the air ducts, where she finds a box with bottles of duotine next to a note. The patient with the ID below is our current target. Target response is positive, now expanding the triggered gland. Ectoplomatine dose up to 1700 micrograms. Change the container, so it looks like an approved variant of duotine. Therefore, it seems as if the staff of this asylum are conducting human experiments on the children, without their knowledge, alongside other physical and mental abuse they have to withstand. As Fran tries to leave the cleaning room, the monster reappears, threatening Fran with Mr. Midnight's life. 
which causes Fran to faint again. This instigates out of the dream where Fran sees being with her cat. Fran's cat runs into a maze and suggests that she should find him at the end of the maze. Fran wakes up and leaves the cellar, which takes her to a place with bloodstains. There are two cells containing human test subjects, with cuts on their foreheads, who seem to be mentally incapacitated. One cell includes a twin, which in the surreal reality mentions the name Edward, the man who helped Fran when she was stuck, and the other cell shows a boy with bandages on his head and vomit on the floor with the pell showing that his brain is exposed. Another room contains a bloody floor mattress and a bucket with blood in it. The surreal world shows a man who used to be in the room. Reading the patient's note, Fran uncovers a horrifying secret about this room. Operating room. Patient, Robert Clark. Psychosurgery procedure, lobotomy. Dr. Roman Bates. Observations. Failed anesthetic. The patient woke up after reaching frontal lobe. The procedure was cancelled and incompleted. Therefore, the terrifying truth about this place is that they indeed conducted human tests, including lobotomy procedures, even on children. While the staff are severely oppressive and abusive to the children, and even occasionally, as suggested previously, holy men or priests having their way with some kids. This place is a literal hell that torments children, or as previously mentioned, the brains of the children being eaten and their innocent inner kids getting devoured. Fran manages to escape the asylum and get into a hedge maze outside of the building. In there, she gets hunted by Kamala's. But a mechanical cat shows her the way, when she goes through a sewer pipe and escapes them. In the forest, Fran experiences psychedelic events, where she meets a giant ant, a beetle pig, a talking rat, a set of heads with long hair called luciferns, who are apparently insects, a live pinecone family, and a mysterious corpse presumably in a tree hollow, who might have been a pest control man. Fran puts a handcrafted door on a well, which leads her to a magical colorful house of a conjoint twin. Clara and Mia, the conjoint twins, have taken Fran's cat, which Fran learns about from a note written by them and a picture on the wall. Fran experiences some paranormal activities from a seemingly stabbed girl, and pictures of the conjoint twins all over the walls, from times they were both separate and conjoined, Going up to the attic, Fran finds a push buggy, where lay a conjoined twin babies, who were artificially joined together as they are sewn together. This suggests that the twins were in fact the result of a human experiment. Maybe in the asylum, where they had a cell for twins, they were also conducting experiments to conjoin twins on top of performing lobotomy. In the attic, Fran also finds her cat put in a locked cage. Mr. Midnight informs Fran that a mysterious presence, which is not human, had been orchestrating their dreams. For Mr. Midnight, Fran being in his dreams, and for Fran, Mr. Midnight being in her dreams. However, this entity seems to be humble and peaceful, an entity who tried to bring Fran and Mr. Midnight together, presumably being Edward, the skeleton who helped Fran in the asylum and who will continuously help Fran throughout the game. Fran then goes downstairs to check the source of a mysterious sound and to find the keys to the cage. As she goes down, she finds the conjoined twins seated at the table. The twins speak in riddles and seem to know Fran very well, mentioning the tragedy of what happened to her parents. These girls tell Fran to conduct a magical ritual and that they intend to bring the person who performed the surgery on them back and punish him after they are separated back to two different buddies. They promise Fran that they will set Mr. Midnight free after she completes the ritual and give Fran the recipe for the ritual. But they seem very mean and buzz Fran around, who might not seem trustworthy. As Fran goes through the opened window by Edward, she meets a toad who tells Fran not to trust the girls. 
He tells her that they use magic to control people. The ghost of the girl in the house belonged to the predecessor to Fran, who failed to perform the ritual successfully and ended up dead. The Toad tells Fran to be creative and figure a way out of this. Fran then goes back into the house and when she takes the medicine again, she sees skeletons at the bottom of a moldy well with bullet holes on the skulls of these victims. Interestingly, the effects of the pills work the other way around now. Fran sees reality when she takes them, rather than the surreal world she was experiencing with the pills. It seems as if failed human experiments were shut and thrown down the well from the asylum. And as the size of the skeletons are small, it seems as if they belong to children. Therefore, this magical and colorful house belonging to the conjoined twins is nothing but an imagination of Fran, when in fact, she is at the bottom of a dark and moldy well, infested with the remains of failed experimented victims. The twins are possibly a figment of Fran's imagination as well, who were subjects of the Oswald Asylum human experiments. These victims were thrown down the well as human experiments were banned during the time they performed the experiments, with human experiments only being permitted recently, as witnessed on a TV channel news broadcast. Fran finds another recipe in the well, which reveals the true soul of a person, which can destroy an impure soul, or give freedom to those who are trapped. Talking to Mr. Midnight again, the cat tells Fran that these girls are witches, just like the stories they used to read, which further fortifies the theory that it's all nothing but Fran's imagination. Her creative mind allows this to be visually projected, inspired by stories she read. Fran tricks the twins and performs the other rituals she found in the well, which sets the twin souls free, while their buddy, presumably the trap, burns into ash. This might suggest how they were imprisoned in their bodies due to the experiment. Fran uses the key on a mirror and inside she finds a hidden letter. Sister promise. We, Clara and Mia Bohomet, promise to revenge the unfair destiny Edward decided for us. With blood and tears, we promise that we will kill him and bring our bodies back. We won't stand this any longer. Even though we are sisters, we hate each other, and we will always hate each other. Nothing will ever change that. But now, with our bodies attached to each other, we can't complete our task. The strongest will live forever, and the weakest will die. There's also a picture of a woman with writing on it which reads, Mother must die. Presumably their mother gave them up to the asylum to be tested on. There's also a duotine bottle but with yellow pills, which we learned in the cleaning room to have been given to patients to be experimented on. A picture of the twins also suggests that they also had a cut on their foreheads, which might suggest they were lobotomized as well, as they heavily practice it in the asylum. Fran then finds a key inside the mirror, which she takes to open the cage her cat is in. Fran and Mr. Midnight are finally reunited in an emotional scene, which unfortunately might just be another figment of Fran's imagination. Fran, accompanied with her cat, gives the baking soda she found to the toad, who enlarges in size and takes Fran and her cat across water to where her house presumably is. Fran encounters a surreal narrow bridge, when they try to cross it, they get attacked by the monster with the animal skull, who cuts the bridge made from tree branches. Fran hanging on to the cut branches, while her eyes are bleeding again, falls down the cliff. Her cat jumps down as well, following Fran. Meanwhile, Fran dreams of her aunt Grace comforting her and putting her to bed. Suddenly Grace disappears and Fran starts crying blood. The blood soon fills the room with Dr. Dearn coming out of it, offering Fran a pill, while bloody tentacles consume Fran. This could suggest that Fran is still stuck in the asylum and all she experienced after escaping happened only in her dreams. But we'll get back to it later. Mr. Midnight wakes up in a mystical beautiful sunny realm, where he finds Fran's clothes, lying next to Fran, 
who has now turned into a tree. Soon a flying boat with a couple of walking humanoid vegetables appear, who take Fran to the king tree of this place, which is called Ethersta. The king also speaks in riddles, informing Fran that she has no place to return to after the tragedy, and as long as love exists, there's no death. But Fran urges the tree to help her get back to her end. The tree agrees and feeds Fran a fruit which lets her understand the language of the residents of this world. When Mr. Midnight asks for one, the tree informs him that he doesn't need one, as their world is full of fragrance and sound, and that it's similar to their world. Which in a way suggests what Fran is experiencing is surreal and not a real world, as the cat speaking is not happening in reality as cats adjust to sounds and smells, rather than speaking and understanding language. Fran is then taken to Palantras, who speaks as if he's a paramedic or an emergency doctor, dealing with emergencies. Palantras takes Fran to a waterfall with pink water, where the king of Volokos, the king of the first reality, bled and made this water very pure, a water which will give Fran legs and arms. While in the water, Palantras tells Fran that she was the one who transformed herself into a tree to protect herself from the fall, in order to survive. This might suggest in a way that Fran might have suffered an actual fall in the real world and lost her mobility and became paralyzed, which in a way saved her. And the name of the chapter might also fortify this theory called vegetative state. Yet again, all of this might be in Fran's head, and she might be in a coma, imagining all of it, something that we will discuss in subsequent videos. Fran also informs Palantras that he's the best doctor she's had, as Dr. Dearn is an evil old man, to which Palantras responds that maybe he's not a bad man, and that he was only following the rules, something that we'll get back to again. Fran sets out to find the Great Wizard to transform her back into her human shape so she can return home. Fran learns from the Clockmaker about Kamala's and the monster who keeps hunting her, who is called Remar, the Prince of the Fifth Reality, ruler of the Kamala's. Fran then meets some Velokas who are the opposite of Kamala's, who are pure and spark joy and happiness. Fran witnesses shielding of one of the Volokas, who has reached the age of being shielded, and then they leave. Fran manages to go to Mount Kotrim and meets the Great Wizard. After running some errands, the wizard instructs Fran to go to the library and collect a book which he can use to perform the magic. Before getting to the library, Fran finds bloodied, rotting corpses of the twins, who are now separated, in a demonic Kamala cloak hides a person. When the cloak drops, the tree Fran sees another Fran with bloodied eyes urging Fran to jump off a cliff and end her own life, and she blames her for killing the twins. But Mr. Midnight comforts and reassures Fran that it's only a Kamala trick, trying to make her think negatively and feel bad. After collecting the book, Fran returns to the wizard who transforms her back into human. Fran keeps getting haunted by negative visions of her mother, dead people, and even herself killing Mr. Midnight, which might be the representation of Fran's negative thoughts and self-doubt thinking she might be the culprit behind killing her parents. Fran starts doubting herself eventually, thinking that she might be crazy just like how the doctors were telling her. The Tree King gives Fran words of wisdom that as long as she has love, she's alive, and that she will be strong enough to fight her inner demons. Mr. Midnight then says that he loves her, and that she won't hurt him. The Tree King then finally tells Fran that she's not ready yet to stay in Ethersta. She has to face her truth first. Fran then goes through the door and finds herself on the other side of the bridge that was cut down by Remar. She suddenly finds her Pell's bottle, which is attached to a string being pulled, with a signboard indicating that her home is to the left. She walks into a trap but manages to cut herself loose. Fran then finds Edward behind the bushes. Fran confronts him about the sisters and why they blamed him. 
to which he responds very concisely that the twin sisters never realized it was their parents who never loved them. But for some reason, they blamed Edward. Edward tells Fran that he always came to Fran at nights and told her stories, as she imagined him. But in fact, his real. He further informs Fran that he exists because Fran exists. This suggests that Edward is in fact yet another figment of Fran's imagination, but a peaceful and a friendly entity, or in other words, an imaginary friend. Edward tells Fran that he's here to help Fran get home in his magical steampunk flying machine, which Edward controls by riding a disintegrated bicycle. Whilst inside the machine, Fran finds a key from the hands of the twin sisters in a surreal reality, and unlocks a puppet show which entails the twin sisters' tale. In a world made of darkness and light, two little sisters try to steal each other's charm. But none of the sides could decide if what they were was just right. Mia was angry and Clara was sad. And this was because they were both mad. Oh, insane little girls. Inside of their minds, Edward, the creature of the night. He came always around in dreams or reality teaching the girls the splendor of duality. But they couldn't understand. Edward was a friend. Edward was the link between darkness and light. He was gray. But Clara and Mia one day decided to get rid of Edward once and for all. Die, creature of the night. Die, they said. But they killed each other. Instead, they're gone. The sisters kept complaining about each other. It's all your fault, Clara. It's all your fault, Mia. Then Edward came to visit for the last time. And he said, You are both trapped in the world of disconnections. But I'll give you a chance. The world has been mean to you. They sewed your bodies together to prove that they could. They gave you a mirror to compare yourselves. I give you nothing but what you already have. And just one tiny little chance to understand the purpose of life. But the clock is ticking. You have until the day a black cat goes missing and the whale's magic door is unlocked. The end. The puppet show describes different mental illnesses and how horrid the twins' experiences were after being attached to each other. This could be again part of Fran's imagination after learning about human experimentation and attaching twins to each other, something she saw in the asylum cell, with the twin girls lobotomized and the word Edward written down on the wall when she takes the pills. In the puppet show, Edward mentions duality, light and darkness. Clara and Mia were two opposites despite being twins. One was angry and another was sad. They never could meet in the middle and understand each other. Instead, they envied each other and tried to steal each other's charm. Edward, a creature in between light and darkness, tried to teach the girls about accepting each other's differences and grow stronger with each other. But due to the girls being already mistreated in the world and experimented on, they held immense grudge and tried to kill Edward, a creature or an idea in their mind which encouraged them the hard truth that they should accept each other. Instead, they killed each other as they couldn't come to terms of being attached to each other. They got rid of Edward or the idea of accepting their harsh reality and tried to separate each other with a knife, thinking one will be killed, but the strongest will survive, which ends up killing them both. That is why their skeletons could be found inside the mirror in their house. It takes a more fantasy turn here as Edward gives them one more chance after they are dead informing them that they are both trapped 
and that they should wait until a cat goes missing and the well's door unlocks. This refers to when Fran goes to them in chapter 2. In there, they have a chance to ask Fran to conduct the ritual to free their trapped souls, which in fact they didn't want to do. But Edward and the Toad guide Fran to free them and the toxic environment they had created, affecting all the creatures around them. This game shows how confusing and strange the world may seem to children, with adults who are two-faced and it's never easy to understand who's good and who's evil. As at times, people might appear good and friendly, but they stab you in the back. Or at times, people might seem unfriendly and threatening, while they have good intentions in heart. Not much later, the ship gets attacked by Kamalas who manage to cause a significant damage to it, to the point that it slowly starts crashing down. Edward tells Fran that he'll always take care of her, which kickstarts a cutscene. In the cutscene, Fran sees Edward telling her a nighttime story, that the story ends after the crash. But Fran isn't fond of the sad ending and urges Edward to tell another. Fran then wakes up in the forest with a bike crashed next to her, similar to the one Edward was using to control the ship, which might suggest that it all happened in Fran's head and she was only cycling towards her house before it crashed down. Fran walks the rest of the way as it's not too far from her house. She arrives in Hay Street, where her house is located on. Fran instructs Mr. Midnight to go inside the house through an open window and open the door from inside. Just as the cat goes in, Dr. Dearn arrives and tells Fran that it's impossible for the cat to be inside the house, as he's dead. And as time passes, the door still doesn't open which does in a way suggest that all along Fran was just imagining her cat being alive, and the entire surreal realities she experienced, including Edward, the flying machine, all the fantastical beings, the twin sisters and more. As Dr. Dearn takes Fran to his car, several Velocas and Kamalas appear in front of her house. Whilst in the car, Dr. Dearn confesses that he was fired from the asylum, as he learned too much that he didn't understand, before showing Fran documents that suggest Fran is dead. The documents unveil a letter to Gladys, the nurse in the asylum, to tell newspaper that Fran was found frozen dead in the forest after running away from her house, discovering her parents' murder. The newspaper reads that Grace, the twin sister of Lucia Bow, Fran's mother, was interrogated in the connection of the murder, but was found innocent. Dr. Dearn carries on that he found out her duotine pills were switched with a variant with high levels of ectoplomatine, an ingredient that creates a door between subconscious and conscious. Dr. Dearn persists that whatever Fran experienced was all in her head and nothing more. When suddenly Fran shifts to the surreal reality, or as she calls it, the Ultra Reality, where Dr. Dearn has a Kamala himself, telling Fran about how his father abused him with his knife. When Fran switches back to the reality, tells Dr. Dearn about it, which he is surprised to how Fran knows about. Therefore, it's possible that Fran's creativity and imagination lets her see different realities, with the ability to recognize people's sadness and traumatic backstory by seeing Kamala's. Dr. Dearn reassures Fran that he won't take her back to the horrible asylum and that Oswald, the founder of the asylum, experimented on the twin sisters called Mia and Clara, who did indeed talk of an imaginary being called Edward, after being experimented on and attached to each other just to see the reaction of DNA. They died shortly after, whose bodies were thrown down the well. Dr. Dearn informs Fran that he needs Fran to discover the horrible secrets of the asylum and expose them. First stop is to the graveyard where the bodies of the Bo Dagenhart family is presumably buried. Fran finds the grave with his parents' name and hers as well. 
She chuckles but mentions whether this might be true, as she saw her dead body in the asylum, and also this might be a fabrication inspired by Remar, making the people in asylum commit such horrendous crimes. When Fran opens the coffins, she finds the remains of a cat in her own coffin. She doesn't want to believe this is Mr. Midnight, but the unforgivable truth is that this skeleton likely belongs to Mr. Midnight. As Dr. Dearn and Fran plan to go back to her house, they get ambushed by Remar, who makes Dr. Dearn vanish and possesses Fran. Fran gets placed inside a cage of darkness, where her heart starts bleeding. Remor says in order to find the ones she loves, she first needs to wake up in darkness. As Fran wakes up, she finds herself shackled in her bed, with her aunt standing over her. Grace tells Fran that the cat killed Fran's parents. When Fran disagrees with her, Grace tells her that they always need someone to blame, not to take responsibility. Grace also tells Fran she's chained to the bed as her hands do bad things. This might suggest that Fran in fact killed her own parents due to suffering from mental disorders, portrayed as Remor. As Grace leaves the room, Fran switches time and sees an alternate reality of herself who doesn't have a cat. She informs Fran about Leon, another doctor who used to work in the asylum, who experienced the same realities of Fran, including the Volokas, Kamalas, and even Remar, whom we'll talk about later. The alternate Fran frees Fran and Fran switches back to her reality. After exploring, she finds a portrait photo of herself and a girl called Alice, who has reference to Alice in Wonderland. Fran exits her room and figures to be in the fifth reality. In there she meets mother Mabuka, mother of Remar, who tells Fran that she was selected to be the key keeper of the essential existence of the five realities. Soon Fran manages to formally meet Remar. Remar shows that it was Fran who in fact killed her parents, who was presumably under the influence of Remar. Fran goes to a room where she finds Dr. Dearn tied to an electric chair and Mr. Midnight put inside a cage, who's incapable of speaking now. Fran then finds a picture of some staff members and patients of the asylum. There stand Gladys, the horrible nurse, Dr. Oswald, the orchestrator of human experimentations, Dr. Leon, a twin babies, who are Clara and Mia, and another set of twins, Grace and Lucia Dagenhart, Fran's mother and aunt, which suggests that they were also part of the twins' experiments by Dr. Oswald. As Fran tries to free Dr. Dearn, Grace and a wheelchair-bound old Dr. Oswald show up. Oswald tells Fran that Grace and her mother were part of his study about twin siblings. He continues saying that he knows Fran's parents are dead and that Remar did a great job at manipulating Fran. He explains that Remar is the manifestation of Fran's fear and that her parents were murdered as they were interfering with Oswald's experiments and plans. Therefore, it's a possibility that when Grace was at home alone with Fran on Friday, she somehow spiked her with drugs, creating paranoia and fear, leading to Fran killing her parents, as Remar could be seen before she went to their room. Therefore, it suggests that Remar was already being manifested and strengthened, being due to Grace taking orders from Oswald to experiment on Fran covertly to see if they can manipulate her. Back to the room, Grace tells Fran that Oswald only wants the best for her. He knows that Fran would be a special girl when Lucia was pregnant with her. Lucia and Grace, under Oswald's orders, were taking good care of Fran until Lucia betrays them and actually tries to save Fran and keep her safe. Grace then suddenly drops Mr. Midnight into the never-ending space under the surreal room. Fran understands the gravity of Grace's crimes, how she manipulated Fran and had a hand in killing her parents and tries to strangle her. Dr. Oswald then rushes in and shoots Fran from the back, which shocks Grace, saying how insane Fran is. Oswald calls Fran a little monster and ironically tells Grace to take her as her body is still warm 
and Oswald can still extract her brain and experiment on her. Dr. Dearn comes along and pleads with them to rush Fran to emergency before she's dead. A dismissing Oswald who only cares about his research tells him that he's been waiting all his life for the right child and brain. This suggests how Fran was specifically designed by Dr. Oswald after he experimented on Grace and Lucia. But as Fran is born, Lucia breaks the deal and tries to protect Fran. Hence why Oswald says that they try to interfere with his work. But it had already been too late as Oswald had some control over Fran and covertly sent Grace to experiment on her. He manipulates her through Raymar to kill her parents, to gain access to her in the asylum, and carry out his initially intended plan and experiment on her. Suddenly, Edward comes in and throws Grace and Oswald into the surrounding open space. He calls Palantras, who comes in with a very alive Mr. Midnight. In shock, Dr. Dearn utters that Edward is not human, and who they are. Palantras reads some spells and says that Mother Mabuka took the innocence of a child. He tells Fran to wake up in the dark and walk towards the light. It works and Fran wakes up. Fran tries to tell Dr. Dearn that it was all real, but his eyes start to bleed similarly to how Fran's eyes bled. Palantra says that he's under the control of Mabuka now, and the only way they can help him is to erase his memories so he can wake up thinking it was all but a dream. Interestingly, before all of this, Fran injected Dr. Dearn with a syringe containing red fluid to wake Dearn up when he was strapped to the electric chair, which might suggest that he got a dose of duotine, causing hallucinations for him to see. Palantra sends Dr. Dearn home by teleporting him, and then they take Fran to Ithursta, including her cat. Fran then speaks one last line, that although she doesn't know everything, one thing she knows is that between guilt and fear, she chooses happiness. Was it all a figment of the creative and imaginative mind of Fran? Or did the five realities really exist? What actually happened to Mr. Midnight? And what really happened at the end? Stay tuned for a subsequent video I'm working on for Fran Bo's ending explained, including the diary of Dr. Leon and his experiences. You can also check out my latest merch by hitting the card above or checking out the channel store. It's been your host, Star. Till the next video, have a fantastic day.